Hey everyone, I hope you're doing fine. And on the thesis, this uh, program that highlights uh, various people who have uh, completed uh, their, their doctorate in various fields, whether it's art, science, literature, um, music, it can be just about any field. We uh, highlight uh, what they have gone through the process of achieving a PhD or doctorate uh, which is considered uh, the highest, uh, you know, uh, award that's given to somebody who completes uh, their studies. And on uh, today's edition of the thesis, I am joined by Dr. Judith Norona, who is uh, my youngest guest as of now. <laughs> Welcome to, to the show. Thank you. Yes, uh, it's a pleasure to have you uh, on the show. So, uh, Dr. Judith Narona, who is uh, in a faculty at uh, the Goa University as an assistant professor in microbiology. Uh, I think her love started from the time she was in school and then slowly grew as uh, she also grew together along with that. And to tell us about her field of studies and uh, the thesis, uh, her title, uh, Judith, can you share with our viewers your um, thesis, yeah, sorry. so the title of my thesis uh, was Characterization of Microalgal Viruses from Aquatic Systems. Mm -hmm. um, so uh, I uh, studied viruses that are found in um, aquatic systems, that is, uh, water bodies, ponds, mm -hmm. lakes, rivers. So a lot so, of yeah. swimming involved, huh? <laughs> <laughs> I didn't swim. I don't know how to swim. No. <laughs> but uh, I just collected water samples and studied them. I thought your, your love for science also and studying aquatic, uh, you know, animals or uh, species and organisms also came from a love from swimming. Swimming. Nothing like that. <laughs> no, it's more, more uh, a love for the biological world. Okay. Yeah. So, uh, you know, uh, what was uh, it that you learned from your, your thesis, you know, it's uh, a big field of study. I think it's very wide, very vast. Um, so, yes. if you could take us through like, you know, what you had to go through. Um, yeah. Uh, so, uh, from the technical point of view, um, uh, I learned that um, viruses are extremely numerous mm -hmm. and um, uh, people generally think that uh, uh, probably bacteria or other microorganisms are, are um, the most abundant, but um, it's actually viruses which are the most abundant, especially when you talk about uh, aquatic ecosystems, soil ecosystems. Mm -hmm. So viruses uh, far outnumber the other microorganisms. And uh, what I was able to study was a very, very small fraction of these viruses. Mm -hmm. It was basically a humbling experience. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, Judith, uh, tell us now, we, we are living in this uh, new norm world, uh, like, you know, masking and hand sanitizers, social distancing, two arm length. Uh, the virus, uh, the term virus, of course, the virus has existed for times immemorial. More study has been conducted now, more specifically. So, uh, can you tell us just in, in brief about, you know, this, the virus term, should we say? Okay. Um... So, um, I'll talk from the perspective of my PhD research, mm -hmm. I mean, the kind of research that we carry out. So, um, let's say around, uh, uh, till around uh, 15 to 20 years ago, um, all the studies, laboratory studies that were conducted on viruses mm -hmm. were culture-based studies. Mm -hmm. So, um, just like bacteria, other microorganisms can be cultivated in the lab, um, viruses can also be cultivated. But it is a very, very small fraction of the existing viruses mm -hmm. that can actually be cultivated in the lab. Mm -hmm. So what scientists were studying was that very small fraction, mm -hmm. which would probably be um, much less than 1% okay. of the existing viruses. Um, today, um, the study of virology itself has been transformed by um, uh, uh, techniques which come in the category of metagenomic studies. Mm -hmm. So, is it so, also to deal with like uh, newer, uh, uh, should we say, uh, like uh, microscopes or something like that to study them? Or um, techniques yeah. to study uh, them? So, these metagenomic techniques are based on the genomes of the viruses. Mm -hmm. So, viruses have uh, either DNA mm -hmm. or RNA, RNA genomes mm -hmm. and uh, metagenomic studies go right to the level of the mm -hmm. genome. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, so, if I take a water sample like I did in mm -hmm. my studies and um, 
uh, I can extract all the DNA or all the RNA that is present in that water mm -hmm. and that will give me an idea of the entire virus community that is present there. Mm -hmm. So, um, I can um, I can get a picture of um, who is there mm -hmm. and what are they doing. So, okay. yeah. Yeah, I'm, it's 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 an interesting field, but it's uh, quite laborious. I'm, I'm sure, right? Yes, it is. When it comes to your thesis, how how easy was it for you to you know um, get your? Probably must have taken you uh, you know lots of effort. I mean, just collecting water from here and there is not enough. You need to like really study it. Yes. And uh, unlike the other fields uh, like literature or the arts uh, section, uh, I think when you deal with a topic like this, your topic, it's more of practical work being in the lab that's more along with the paperwork later. Yes, uh, that's very true. In fact, um, uh, in in the sciences, uh, uh, I would say the entire first um, three to four years of PhD, uh, you, the word thesis doesn't even come into the picture. Mm -hmm. So, it's all laboratory work, uh, experiments, trying to get results mm -hmm. and uh, results never come easily. So, you're dealing with uh, failure and problem solving and uh, just trying to get those results so that you can write, right. so that yeah. you can make a story out of it right. and write your thesis. So, that's yeah. like a, a director or who will be starting and writing his, his story. You have to like, before you write the story, you have to… You have to do all yeah, the background do work. all the background. So, uh, let's get a little background uh, of you. Like, you know, uh, tell us uh, what kindled that spark in you for, for the love for sciences. Was it somebody at home, your parents, school, college, some teacher? Okay. So, um… Uh, when, when you were young, you were not in, uh, into uh, playing with dolls and or reading books? <laughs> uh, home environment definitely, um, you know, uh, played a big role mm -hmm. because uh, my mother is a PhD in philosophy mm -hmm. and um, my father is also highly educated and um, uh, they provided a very supportive uh, atmosphere for um, uh, academic excellence, mm -hmm. uh, maybe I can say. Um, but. Uh, if I look back, I didn't, uh, I, I never planned ahead mm -hmm. um, all through my studies. I just took things uh, as, 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 it yeah, came. as it came. So, my decisions were made at the time of, uh, you know, uh, taking that next, next step. step yeah. So, I didn't, uh, you know, think way in advance that I mm -hmm. would do a master's or a PhD or even that I would get into teaching. I mean, I, I, I didn't visualize all this. So right. it was but you had an, uh, an aim that, uh, okay, you're going to take in your sciences, go in for the sciences. Um, yes, uh, yes, that decision I did make uh, after the 10th standard. Mm -hmm. So then, um, so was yes, there I did not. So, was there some teacher who influenced you or just that you... I think, love? yeah, it was just the interest. Okay, yeah. all right. Because m many a times there's uh, some particular teacher who, you know, who teaches well and, you know, you take up and say, oh, I, I, I think that's, that's interesting. I'd like to go ahead and study a little bit more about it. Okay. Um, uh, I wouldn't say any particular teacher. I mean, probably the subconscious influences were there. But uh, more than the teachers, I would say probably my peers influenced me because um, I uh, did my ninth and 10th standard uh, in a school where um, uh, the majority of students were preparing for either engineering or medicine. So, they were all, they all had that focus. Mm -hmm and uh, towards the sciences. So, uh, I, I guess I just went with the flow and once the interest developed, then I never uh, considered changing my decision. Yes. So, 12 science, then you completed your BSc? BSc. In uh, what, what was your subject? Uh, in botany major? and biotechnology. All right. So, that was from? Zales? That was from Kamal College. Kamal College. Yeah. All right. In Nuve. Yes. And uh, then you went into, do you pursue your high, uh, higher studies, MSc? MSc. That in, was for, from Goa University? Yeah, that was from Goa University. But um, uh, at that time, Goa University had uh, only the marine biotechnology course. Mm -hmm. And um, that uh, the entrance to that was through a national entrance exam. So, I answered the national entrance exam, but I got admission in Goa. So, it was, <laughs> it was like a destiny, even though I could have got admission at any of the other universities, mm -hmm. uh, based on my ranking, etc. I got admission in Goa and um, it was great. Yes, uh, yeah. I'm sure be, uh, being close to home is uh, something special as well and yes. studying as well. You have your go on the environment that you have to, yes. to grow in. All right. So, um, after your MSc, then what about your further studies? You went into 
So there again, uh, I think it was um, peer influence. So uh, at the time of my MSc, uh, most of my classmates were uh, non-Goans. Mm -hmm. So um, uh, they they are more competitive in nature, and um, uh, everyone had this uh, aim of clearing the CSIR net exam and um, uh, pursuing a PhD at at any of the national institutes. So I also went with that flow and um, got my CSIR net JRF. After which I joined at uh, the Center for Cellular and Molecular Biology mm -hmm. in Hyderabad. Okay. So I started my PhD there. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, so I uh, worked there for two years mm -hmm. um, on um, a, a topic in neurobiology. Okay. And um, yeah, after that, uh, uh, things changed a little for me because um, I made the decision to return to Goa. Mm -hmm. So I, um, I did not continue with that particular PhD project. Okay. I returned to Goa and uh, started working for a while. Mm -hmm. And uh, after after some time, I restarted my PhD on a different topic mm -hmm. at Goa University. Okay. Yeah. So that the first uh, PhD topic is still in the piping. I mean, um, you, uh, I'm still you interested contemplating in contemplating on whether you can <laughs> <laughs> restart it. Yeah, um, I wouldn't want to restart it because now the field has advanced mm -hmm. uh, much more. Uh, so, but but the the idea is still there to kind of combine um, the the uh, expertise that I have now mm -hmm. with that and try to maybe do something, uh, you know, combining the two yes. fields. Yeah, I think because uh, you 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 have the time and uh, also supportive family at home who can uh, you know help you to get a double doctorate as well, right? <laughs> All right. So on the thesis, uh, if you've just joined us, yes, a quick little rewind. Of course, we have uh, Dr. Judith Norona here with us uh, on this show. The thesis that uh, kind of uh, opens up uh, a little bit about the personality and the people who have completed their doctorate in various fields. Uh, Dr. Tell us about your thesis. You, uh, you're like I said earlier, you're one of my youngest guests on on, on the show. You've completed uh, your doctorate, and uh, the one that you started off working in Hyderabad. Uh, is it still? Uh, do you have those notes with you? Would you like to go ahead and do a double doctorate? Do you know of any of your friends who have done a double doctorate or? Um, I really don't know anyone who uh, who has done a do double doctorate and um, uh, I would say that doing it once is enough for a lifetime. For a lifetime. <laughs> yeah, so uh, a double doctorate is something uh, kind of unimaginable. <laughs> oh, is it? Okay, yeah. Okay. But would Especially you toy on the idea of uh, maybe trying it? Um, uh, so uh, now as a teacher, uh, I do have to do research as well. So uh, the idea is there in in the back of my head that um, uh, somehow if I could combine uh, the uh, the research done previously and um, my new, current new, field, uh, yes, yes. so if I could combine the two and somehow do something that um, you know relates both of them. Uh, but um, uh, I do have a paper published from the work uh, that I did in um, CCMB Hyderabad. Mm -hmm. So. Mm -hmm. Uh, that's uh, that's like uh, that was like um, closure for uh, you know what uh, the work that I did there. So right. um, yeah. But uh, uh, tell me one thing. Uh, uh, as as a student who's pursuing their you know a doctorate, you need to have a guide, right? Yes. And a guide. I think nowadays there, there's an it's it's the necessity that the guide has to have a paper published. So you have already have a paper published. So you can be a guide to somebody right now. Um, it's not one paper, it's multiple papers. Okay. So that is the criterion. Okay. Uh, I cannot yet be a PhD guide. So there are several criteria okay. for that. As so far the as first requirement to, to do your, your PhD would be clearing your net uh, exam or set? Uh, to do a PhD, um, every institute has different rules. Okay. So, uh, if you're talking about Goa University, um, uh, you need to clear any of the uh, the um, competitive exams, mm -hmm. NET, SET, That's GATE, mm -hmm. and um, uh, and after that, you need to go through an interview mm -hmm. at the specific department where you plan to work. Okay. And uh, if you clear that, then you're admitted. But uh, nowadays, uh, PhD guides generally prefer that you come with a fellowship. Okay. So when you're applying itself, either a GRF or some other fellowship um, is preferable. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 
all right and uh, um, to tell me about uh, your family you have a supportive uh, husband uh, a, yes. a son one son and tell me tell me a little bit about them yeah so um, yes uh, my husband has been a crucial support uh, mm -hmm. in the phd phase mm -hmm. and so um, first you were you a, a doctor or a mum <laughs> <laughs> yes uh, motherhood came before i became a doctor okay um so yes motherhood came right in the uh, middle of my phd mm -hmm. but um which was not easy it was yeah, quite yeah. challenging uh, managing both the things but um thanks to the support of my husband mm -hmm. as well as my in-laws and my parents do you um, uh, yeah. did you get like a 6 month uh, yes. a break <laughs> yes i i did get a maternity <laughs> break but um it took a lot more than that mm -hmm. for my um, for my um Uh, thinking capacity to return to pre motherhood right so uh, that was also a challenge um and i i'm sure uh, any any uh, mother pursuing her phd will agree with me so um yeah because uh, normally most of uh, my previous guests uh, they've uh, either been mamas or papas before they decided to you know okay. uh, after maybe 10 12 years after being Uh, a mother or a father they've decided to do their phd so you're okay. the one who's still in in the middle of of both i think <laughs> so uh you you could think of your second phd <laughs> <laughs> right away uh, apart from uh, studies uh, i think you also sing yes somebody uh, told me that you sing for a choir is that your hobby um, your pastime the way you yes. pass your time yes yeah music has always been um, uh, a passion i would say okay. and um, uh, yes i have sung with uh, with several choirs but um, of late i haven't had much time because okay. of managing the job and uh, uh family as well yeah. or do you uh, when you teach uh, in the university do you sing and teach <laughs> <laughs> in sing song form because as for me uh, per se uh, i i can uh, recollect uh, lyrics of songs much better than i can you know recollect, <laughs> recollect any of my uh, study or educational matter i think uh, yes uh, not in the classroom but probably uh, uh, when i'm you know just in my room if you're passing by you'd probably hear me singing <laughs> oh. <laughs> so there you are uh, a singing uh, teacher or lecturer professor at the the goa university i'm sure that's going to add some charm to many of you who would be joining microbiology right yes. uh, at the goa university um uh, Jurit thank you so much for your time sharing your knowledge and before you go if you could uh, if you have any message to those who would be like you know pursuing their doctorate or any tips for them to them you know when they should you know go ahead so you could share with us Yes um yeah especially for those uh, pursuing a PhD in the sciences so where you have um uh, the lab work which uh, is quite challenging um uh, i just have one thing to say which is um it's not going to be easy so uh, if if you're someone who's just starting a phd or uh, thinking of pursuing a phd uh, uh, it's better to be mentally prepared that it's not going to be easy but um uh, at the same time to be prepared to face whatever challenges come up so um uh, i would say phd was a kind of a life training for me and um uh one one thing i distinctly remember was that um uh, whenever my experiments would not work out um so the day that i realized that something had failed uh i would take that day to you know just um just mourn over the experiment that had failed and um but by the time i uh, was traveling home or uh, rewinding during the evening i would already be thinking of a way out what can be done next what can be done to solve this issue so um i hope that those who are pursuing or considering pursuing a phd would uh, adopt a similar kind of an approach and uh, that would definitely see them through the through to the end of their phds yeah. fantastic that's a really nice life lesson uh shared by dr judith narona so um i'm sure many of you who would be pursuing your studies uh, even if it's not a doctorate uh, even if you're just going to your school or college this is a very important lesson you know many a times uh, we fail and we think that things are not going the way they are but those are the things that make us strong i think and you have to like work on those and uh, yes 
yes, uh, achieve the success that uh, you are looking forward to. So, uh, thank you once again, uh, Dr. Thank Judith so Nona, for your time uh, being here with us on CCR TV. And uh, I wish you all the very best in case you, you decide to go on to be a doctor. A double doctor. doctorate. <laughs> yes. Uh, and uh, to our viewers of CCR TV, uh, do share with us uh, any information you have uh, or any queries you have uh, on email. You can email us at uh, ccrtvgoa at gmail.com. You can follow us. We have our phone numbers listed as well. Do subscribe to our YouTube page as well. And till we meet again, this is Bambino along with uh, Dr. Judith signing off on uh, this show. It's called The Thesis. Take care and bye-bye.